This ESPN telecast available in high definition on ABC HD. We welcome you back to the Chick-fil-A College Kickoff presented by Southwest Airlines, Alabama, and Clemson. Tommy Bowden, Clemson coach, is standing by with Lisa Salters. Lisa. Fred, coach, your new untested offensive line. Earlier in the week, you were saying your confidence level between five and seven. What do you need to see from the online line they, they need to come out poised. It's going to be a lot of emotion. It's going to be real loud. Got to talk a little bit. Come out poised. Just play smart. You told me that you want the offensive line to feel pressure, to feel like it's on them. How come? Yeah, because it takes it off me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Coach. <laughs> love and honest coach. Kirk, I love somebody and else, honest man. Somebody else take the pressure. I've had enough for nine years. Well, the phenom, Julio Jones, we could be seeing him right here at the top. On the right side, you see number eight. Javier Arenas is on the other side. So the pressure is on Mark Buckles, who will kick it off now for the Tigers. First time that these two schools have met since 1975. Every week matters, but some more than others. Arenas is going to take it at the four yard line. Middle return, slash over to the right-hand side and look for daylight. Fine return out to the 36-yard line. That's 32 yards. Now, as we take you through the Alabama starting offense at the top of the screen, the Crimson Tide curtain led on the field by senior quarterback John Parker Wilson. Uh, John Parker Wilson has had a career in his two years as a starter. There have been some ups and some downs. This year, he's focusing on just playing with confidence and staying within himself. He's very, very important to this Alabama attack this year with so many young players around him. His leadership is pivotal, especially in this opening ball game. Jim McElwain, his third offensive coordinator in his many years. Glenn Coffey is set as the single running back behind him. Coffey with the first carry of the game, and he slashes to the 41-yard line. Now, we want to talk about some impact players, some fellas for you to watch on this Alabama offense. And certainly we had mentioned Julio. He's the first freshman to ever open the season for Alabama. But right behind him, keep an eye on Mark Ingram from Flint, Michigan. His daddy, of course, was on the Super Bowl team with the New York Giants. He'll play. Their big left tackle, all SEC, Andre Smith. He did start as a freshman. This is his 27th consecutive start. Second down. Right back pounding the middle, measuring what they've got, and this is going to leave them with a third down coming up here. You mentioned Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator this year for Alabama, the third offensive coordinator in the last three years. And for Vic Coning, who's the defensive coordinator for Clemson, he is thinking, okay, we think we have an idea how Nick Saban will attack us, and there's a good shot of Vic Coning. But they had to prepare with the first game. You're looking at film from Fresno State where Jim McElwain was last year. So they try to roll the dice here, get a feel early for the tendencies of this new offense from the Crimson Tide. So there is the shift for third and two. Come right back with Coffee for the first down. So staying on the ground, very conservative. And remember, that's what they want to do with John Parker Wilson. If you look at his numbers, where he was disappointing a year ago, and we've got an injured Tiger down on the floor, but where he was disappointing a year ago, Kirk, the 12 interceptions. That's just too many for a big-time quarterback to make. And Ricky Sapp, a key to the defensive line, is down. And we certainly hope that is not serious. He's grabbing at his right leg. And Ricky Sapp, as much as people are talking about Daquan Bowers, the true freshman coming in, he's the number one player in the in the nation. Ricky Sapp is the bell cow. He's the leader of this Clemson defense. He comes in closing like his leg may have just come down hard on the turf. Well, the medical staff out at the 45 yard line. And Daquan Bowers, number 93, comes on to the field. So Daquan Bowers will be on the field. 
Hicks, the number one rated high school player in the entire nation. We've talked so much about Julio Jones this week. Daquan Bowers was going to play tonight no matter what. And now with an injury here early to Ricky Sapp, he's inserted into the lineup to see what he can do. And you can see his size at 275 pounds makes him very different from some of the other defensive ends that Clemson has. Here's where the young man is from, Bamberg, South Carolina. Let's take a little look, a glimpse of what you're going to see. Now obviously, he steps way up in talent, but here he comes. Yes, indeed. Ate that up big time. <laughs> no contest. Let's do it with the right arm. Fast off the ball at the All-American Bowl. Quarterback getting it out of there in a hurry. But he'll find a little bit of a different oh, yeah. tempo here. A, a different game. And they said and it's good to see Ricky Sapp walking off the field here. And we'll see if he's able to return later. But Daquan Bowers, the thing they said is he's young. He's going to make mistakes. But his lower body strength for a true freshman is off the charts. So he has great leverage as a defensive lineman trying to get to the outside around an offensive tackle to put pressure. And of course, Sapp, also from Bamberg, he helped recruit Bowers to Clemson. Now on a first down and 10. And the tide will go to the shotgun for the first time tonight. They've had John Parker up under center, and there was movement in that offensive line. Dead ball. Ball start. 78 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Mike Johnson, a junior left guard moved that time that's something we're going to watch in this game these teams are playing great opponents it's a very loud environment communication will be key up front for the linemen and the quarterbacks could be Bama's first pass of the night fullback and a tailback to protect they stay on the ground they stay conservative and coffee gets to the 48 yard line as he powers through and let's go to Aaron Andrews Brent, in talking to Nick Saban this morning, he told us that the biggest concern for his offense right now is the speed of Clemson's defense. He said simply, we could not simulate that, obviously, in our practices. He didn't want big mental lapses and the team to get frustrated early. You mentioned that with John Parker Wilson. So it's going to be interesting to see how these guys handle Clemson's speed over here. Here's another one of the freshmen, the talented, from Flint, Michigan, Mark Ingram, number 22, into the backfield. And one thing that impressed Coach Saban is that Ingram is not afraid to block. You've got to do that as a running back. They set a quick screen. There's Jones. Jones gets close to a first down the first time he handles the football here tonight and picks up eight yards. This, this is what Alabama fans have been waiting to see. And Ingram goes out just as you said, Lee, or just as you said, Brandon puts up a big block. But this is this is what everybody's been talking about. The big freshman receiver getting his hands on the ball. And you can see for his size at six, four and a half, the acceleration to get upfield in a hurry. Third down and one. And Mark Ingram stays in as the running back. Will he get the call for the first down here? Here he comes. Got the first down, so the freshman contributes on back-to-back -back plays, a block, and then runs for the first down. What we're seeing here, six plays in, five runs, and the one pass. The knock last year on John Parker Wilson in the offense was that they didn't have enough easy throws, the quick throws, the slip screens, just to get his confidence going. And after the year he had last year, they're trying to put the pressure and spread it around to the rest of the offense. So John Parker doesn't feel like he has to do everything. And we're seeing that right now here on this first drive. Travis McCall offset as an H-back. Ingram stays right on the field on this first down. Play action, they're going to throw on first down. Plenty of time for John Parker Wilson going for the home run. Incomplete. And Jones was covered. As he broke downfield, they did not turn him loose. Chris Chancellor was right there. Well-designed play here by Alabama. One-on-one -on -one coverage. McCoy goes off to the left to take the safety, leaving one-on-one -on -one coverage with Julio Jones against Chancellor. Chancellor staying with him step for step. The ball bit overthrown, but pretty good coverage that time by Chris Chancellor. Second and ten, and Ingram is still in. This is the eighth play of this drive, and drives like this will wear defense down as the night moves along. Took too much time. 
you know, with the new rules, the 40-second clock. And it's zeroed out. The quarterback, a senior quarterback, has got to be aware of that as to where he is Offense, with the clock. Five yard penalty. The clock is up high second out. on the 40 seconds, and he can take a look at it. Now, because we've had a different kind of a stoppage, he will be looking at the 25-second clock, and it is starting to move now. It's one of those things you can see by the facial expression of John Parker Wilson, senior quarterback like you talked about. It's just a mental error. He knows better than that. You can see by his reaction and Nick Saban's reaction, not very happy with himself there. So a false start, delay of game on their first drive, come back with the running play to the 39-yard line. And uh, Lisa, of course, is on the Clemson sideline there with Alabama. So let's go to Lisa. Brent, Ricky Sapp, as you can see, back on the field. They were working on his lower leg over here on the sideline. He ran up and down, said he's okay. Again, back in the game. They just see that, that wasn't serious. Yeah, it looked like maybe just a bruise where he came down. He came down. You could still see he's limping around out there, but he wants to play in this football game tonight. You can see the respect that Saban has for young Ingram. Opening night, and he is keeping the freshman runner in there. He's going to try to look for somebody to pick up, and he picked up another block. Beautiful, but there's a penalty flag down on the play, so hold on. As Marquise Mays went in the air, but this one's coming back. Hard to the snap. We had a snap infraction against the offense. Five yard penalty to main third down. Well, snap infraction. Did the center turn the ball over or pick it up before he. Uh... Yeah, that, you know, there's something I can think of. Maybe a little bit of movement by Caldwell out of the shotgun. Let's see if his if his leg moves or if the ball oh, he's leaning. See how he's kind yeah. of starting to. But that was so slight. Shocked that they were able to pick up on that. And that's the third Alabama penalty. This is an SEC crew. A high percentage completion again, coming back to Coffee, who's back on the field, short of the first down. But what a play Mays made that was called back. <laughs> he got his hand Are up there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was nice. Another one of those another one of the freshmen with the speed. The yeah. Now, Lee Tiffin trots onto the field. This is a 54-yarder, but controlled weather with this dome. So here comes the 54-yarder. From the left hash. Good. A 54-yard field goal by Lee Tiffin, who a couple of years ago struggled mightily, but came back last year and certainly has put the Crimson Tide off to a great start this season with a 54-yard field goal for Nick Saban's Tide. A career-long 54-yard field goal for Lee Tiffin, and yes, he is the son a van who was an all-american kicker for coach Ray Perkins back in the mid 80s. I covered daddy quite a few big games. He had a great leg and now Lee's starting to match it. How about Lee that you and I were watching from up here it looked low and I didn't think it had the distance. It looked like one of your drives. It just kept going and going. <laughs> out in Montana that ball that flies, right? right? That's right. That altitude buddy. Now Clemson will match with some speed back there. CJ Spiller and Jacoby Ford. Here comes Lightning. Spell looking for a hole. Twist, and he is down at the 30-yard line. Well, we'll take you through the Clemson starting offense at the top of your screen. The Tigers are led on the field by their senior quarterback, Colin Harper. Colin Harper, preseason ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Very different from where he was a year ago when he was fighting for the job to hold off the freshman Willie Korn. But what a big year last year as a junior. Threw for close to 3,000 yards. Just a very consistent performer. Makes great decisions, understands the system, and has an accurate throw. That's why he is so effective this last year as a quarterback. Their freshman, Jamie Harper, steps out. Obviously, we're going to see a lot of James Davis. 
And this young man was a very ballyhooed recruit out of the Jacksonville, Florida area. Play action, send him loose. Deep they go, and almost picked off at the 40-yard line. That was Rashad Johnson, the Alabama safety, who took a shot at that. Aaron Kelly was the intended receiver. One of the things that Tommy Bowden has done in the past is promise true freshmen that the first carry of the year you're going to get. People know about that. So instead of giving it to Jamie Harper, he fakes it to Harper, hoping the safeties will come up to make the play, but they don't bite on it. So Johnson, as a disciplined safety, is back waiting. Almost had to call a fair catch on that ball. Yeah, he probably should have had it. He probably yeah. thinks he should have pulled that down. Now, young Harper stays in at the tailback. He'd be the favorite here on second and ten. He comes into the middle, but only fumble and the tide signals they've got it. They do indeed. Our first turnover of the game. Start the freshman and pay a price. As I said, Tommy Bowden kind of allows the true freshman to come in. And even though you have Spiller and Davis, the experienced backs, he just wants to give him that chance to show what he can do. He has his hands on the ball. He takes his first hit of his college career. The ball comes out, and look who covers it. Another true freshman from Alabama, Dante Hightower, gets in there and fights the ball away for the Clemson Tigers, the offense. Dante Hightower looks like he's a senior when you see him physically. He is imposing. Yes. He's under further review. So the SEC officials upstairs will take a look. Perhaps the knee was down. They're running the replays back and forth, as most of you know who are watching. All the plays are reviewed upstairs. Unlike the NFL, the referee will just wait for the decision, and then he will pass it along to the crowd. And meanwhile, a couple of points here to make about this Clemson offense as we watch here, Kirk, and see what you think. Let's see if his knee, now the ball comes out before his knee is yeah, down. Like and clearly then a fumble. At, th at this point, you see the freshman Hightower battling there to try to come up with the football see if the ball come down the ball is out and then the knee touches it's confirmation ball is stripped out by Reamer 13 see the right hand get in there watch him rip the ball out and watch the knee ball is out knees not even close to being good. better to be safe than sorry but they'll get confirmation there and this this call will stand Terrific camera work by our crew. Clearly a, a fumble, and uh, they'll quickly make this announcement. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a fumble. Let's look, at, let's look at the big picture as we came in. Clemson top 10 in the nation. How would they handle the pressure? Playing an Alabama team that's a bit of an unknown. They needed to start fast. They don't want to feel the pressure and start slow and give this Alabama team confidence. And look at this. A big field goal, a turnover, and now they're deep in Clemson territory. This is exactly how Nick Saban wanted to get this game started. Glenn Coffey back in as the running back. Strength of the formation is to the left. Here is Coffey. Moves in behind the left side of the line for a nice run on first down to the 35-yard line before Scott makes the stop for the Tigers. Over there on the left side of that line, of course, is Andre Smith, who wanted us to pass along that he no longer weighs 340. The big fella for Alabama, number 71, now weighs 330. He said, so he's, <laughs> he's trimmed down a little bit over there on that hey. side with Mike Johnson. He said, got to get my weight right. Get 10 pounds. He'll be playing Sunday ball in a couple of years. He's a big old rascal given. So here we go. Second down and four. Play fake. John Parker Wilson over the middle. And he picks up Nick Walker. So working to the tight end over the middle of the field. And then Bama marches down inside the red zone. I want you to take a look when you effectively run the football what is going to happen when linebackers start to see the run they're going to come up and they're going to get confused look at the linebackers looking around they don't know whether to come up to drop back because Alabama is effectively controlling the line of scrimmage it's opening up their play action game first and ten and they can pick up a first down as you can see without scoring a touchdown as they pound straight ahead with coffee 
The young man calling the plays upstairs, Jim McElwain, who was their new offensive coordinator, he grew up in Missoula, Montana. He attended Sentinel High School, and he was all set to go to the university there and play quarterback for the Grizzlies, but they underwent a coaching change, and one of the assistant coaches went over to Eastern Washington, where McElvain had an outstanding career and learned a lot about the passing game. So he's the man upstairs here tonight as the offensive coordinator, and we'll see what they come up with now on second down and six. Toss play, Ingram back on the field. Ingram muscles across the five. An impressive looking freshman. He is impressive, and you can see for them to put him in, they're impressed with how hard he runs. And there's a great look all the way to your far left of the glasses. Jim McElwain, the new offensive coordinator for Alabama, and it was worth seeing tonight. He has a history, last year he was at Fresno State, of getting quarterbacks to understand his system, simplify things, and get physical with the offensive line. We'll see a lot of two tight end looks, and so far, it's a masterpiece of what he likes to do. But this is a big third down here. Clemson would like to stop him right here and settle for a second field goal. They'd dearly love to hold this at 6 0. John Parker's got other ideas. High and complete, and he overthrew Mike McCoy in the end zone. Mike McCoy just a little bit too high for the 6 2 junior from Mississippi. And Clemson defense comes up with a huge stop in this game early to force the field goal and to bring Tiffin back out for his second field goal attempt. The ball is high and down there, if, it's, if you're going to miss as a quarterback, it's better to miss high where only your, your receiver has a chance. P.J. Fitzgerald, he's the holder. He'll put it down. And Tiffin will attempt to add to that 54-yarder with a 21-yarder. He did beautiful leg. Huh? Slammed that one right through. No question about that one. Bama. Two field goals. Thunder and lightning. They got to get rolling. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Cadillac. And Chick fil A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. In Atlanta, the Chick-fil-A college kickoff. Next year, looks like Virginia Tech might have an appointment with Alabama. We'll see how that turns out. But I know there have been negotiations between the two schools. What a great, great setting. Doesn't it feel like a bowl game? I mean, this is, this is Very great. Much. Very much. I mean, we've been watching college football for the last 48 hours, and this scene feels like it's late December or early January. It's terrific. The Alabama coaching staff. Coaching him up on that sideline. Tiffin ready with his second kickoff here. And all that speed is back deep. This is Ford now. He can flat fly too. From the nine, and he gets well. Whoa, did he get lit up short of the 20-yard line. That's Mark Barron, the freshman safety. And Alabama fans, another freshman. If, you, if you're hearing a theme, it's what a lot of people have been waiting to see, and that's these freshmen from, from, play, uh, from Alabama getting on the field and making plays, and there's Mark Barron, his first chance to participate as a Crimson Tide player, lowering the boom on Ford. Now James Davis, the senior running back. He couldn't wind up breaking all the records. He's Thunder. And it's a thunderous effort by the Tide right now as Terrence Cody, their 365-pound nose man, blows the play up. This, this is, now, this is not a freshman, but this is a junior college first-year player. Cody shows up at 400 pounds. 400. He's Remember? worked himself down to 365 pounds in the inside of that defense. And Nick Saban says they're much stronger now thanks to his push and his presence in the middle. Remember now, this is an offensive line with four new starters. Only number 65 there, Thomas Austin, started a year ago. He's the center. Davis picks his way, but only for a couple of yards. Now, what is really important for an offensive
offensive line to come together is any late calls that they make. And Nick Saban saying, we would love to force them into that, but I'm a little bit scared about their screen attack. Tommy Bowden, through the years, as they broke the tape down of last year, he said he used more screen passes than anybody he's scouted in a long time. And if we get loose on a rush and they get that speed outside for a screen, we could be in trouble. Third down and nine now. There's Austin identifying the line call. From the pocket, incomplete, through wide of the intended receiver, Tyler Grisham. And Clemson has its hands full with Saban's Crimson Tide here tonight. This is a man who knows how to coach defense as well as anybody in the land. All I can tell you right now is that Nick Saban not only can coach defense, he can motivate a football team. Remember, this is year two for these Alabama players to understand what makes Nick Saban tick. And this is a team that is mentally tough and physically tough. Clemson better get ready to play ball tonight, and it could be a long football game. Dawson Zimmerson will punt tonight. Zimmerman has good hang time. We see a penalty flag flying. Drives Arenas back inside the 30-yard line. Got a little bit of an alley on the right side. Cuts back middle, and he is to midfield. And we've got a penalty flag back down at the 18-yard line. And we've got an FCC crew here tonight, and our referee is Thomas Ritter. Illegal formation on the kicking team. The right guard and right tackle were not on the line of scrimmage. That five yards will be added to the spot where the play ended first down. Brent, I think you and I are seeing the same thing from up here. We're seeing a very <clears throat> hungry Alabama football team, especially in the trenches. They are dominating Clemson with their offensive line and with their defensive line, just outworking the Tigers up front. So we will take a break. Alabama with two field goals, shutting out Clemson early. Welcome you back to Saturday Night Football. Alabama with a pair of field goals, upsetting Clemson 6 0. Terry Grant and Roy Upchurch are in as the two running backs for the tie. That will mean that Coach Saban will have used four running backs. Glenn Coffey started, then there was the freshman, now Terry Grant and Roy Upchurch. Alabama doing a great job as I said of controlling the line of scrimmage and running the football would not be surprised at some point on this drive to see them go play action and take a chance downfield by throwing the football on first down they're going to throw it to the front no check that that's McCoy the junior for nine yards Matt Weiner what have you got in the way of an update for us. Hi, Brent. I've got our nominee for the Pontiac game-changing performance from Ann Arbor. The Utah Utes in town. Brian Johnson to Brayden Godfrey to give the Utes a 25-10 lead that ultimately held up. Vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance beginning tomorrow at 9 a.m. on ESPN.com. You know, Matt, not shocking. Utah. They've played the same system for a number of years. Michigan in that learning mode. A pretty good football team, the Utes, this year. As Ingram back on the field, muscles for another first down. And Ingram doing a little barking. There, there's an indication of what the true freshman can bring. And again, the coaches, the thing that stood out to them is his toughness. For a freshman running back, he didn't want to bounce everything outside. He was willing to lower his shoulder and lower that boom into those linebackers. That's exactly what he did there. Here's the toss play now to Ingram. Ingram busts across into the red zone. And let me tell you about the recruiting as you take a look at this replay of Mark Ingram. When Nick Saban was an assistant coach at Michigan State, his daddy, Ingram's daddy, was a wide receiver from Flint, Michigan. And it was up to Saban. One of his responsibilities was to make sure that Ingram went to class up in East Lansing. 
Well, guess what? He couldn't find him, but he could find his girlfriend, who happens to be this youngster's mother. So when he started recruiting Ingram, the woman said, Coach, you probably don't remember me, but you used to call me when you were an assistant coach and get me to get Mark to class so we could stay eligible. <laughs> and she said, I'd love my son to play for you. And that's how they were able to recruit Mark Ingram from out from under the nose of Michigan State and Michigan. Because a lot of those Flint youngsters, as you know, Kirk, have gone to East Lansing to play for the Spartans. Second down and one now. Coffee back in as the running back. Left side, first down. I'm just, I am blown away in this era of spread offenses and wide receivers all over the place. This is a kind of a throwback offense. Couple tight ends, big physical offensive line, rotation of running backs. They all bring something a little bit different to the table, and they're just lowering their shoulder and running right over top of this Clemson defense. First and goal. Need to finish a drive, though. Don't want to settle for field goals. Timeout is called by John Parker Wilson as he comes up to the line of scrimmage. Coffee was going to be his running back. That left side, Kirk, Andre Smith and Mike Johnson, they have been blowing big holes in that Clemson front. And remember, everybody said that the Tigers had an advantage with their defense here tonight. But Bam is moving the ball with all these running backs. Well, I, I think it, a lot of this early in the year has to do with camp and how you run a camp. Nick Saban runs a tough camp. It is a grind. And I think that it's tough to get through as a player, but when you get through it, on the other end, there's a reward. And that reward is the season. When you get into a season and you get into a game, you're going to find out who's worked as hard as we have worked. And right now, early, Alabama's gaining confidence with every snap. Clemson has one yard. Three minutes to go in the first quarter, one yard because they can't get the ball back because right now Alabama's just controlling things. But you're right, great point. They have to, it feels like it's 13 or 20 to nothing the way this game is gone, but Alabama cannot get into the end zone. It's important that they finish a drive off. Another big defensive stand coming up here for the Tigers. Bama with a first and goal. Powering coffee to the end zone, down to the one. Stopped at the one-yard line where it will be second down and goal. I mean, if you're playing Alabama this year, this is what you're going to have to get used to seeing. And again, it's early in the get this game. Things could turn, but at this point, this was their goal. This is what they wanted to establish. Brand new group of linebackers, undersized for Clemson. They wanted to line up, roll up their sleeves, and just come right after them. Double tight, straight ahead. Dives into the end zone, John Parker Wilson. The Alabama quarterback scores our first touchdown of the evening. More the same. Look at the surge. Look at the surge. And what's happening right now is the team in white with every snap is getting more and more confident. And the team in orange is starting to question themselves a bit more and more right now. But the one thing you've got to keep in mind, when it comes to skill players and speed, Clemson's got plenty of that. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series continues on ESPN. Tomorrow night at 7 Eastern with the Pepsi 500 out in California. Then next Saturday, the final race before the chase. The Chevy Rock and Roll 400 of Richmond coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ABC. We are in the heart of NASCAR country down here in the southeast. Two great passions, college football and NASCAR. What great fans. We saw them on the streets of Atlanta all day. Ticket scalpers out there. That's when we knew we had a major event. When they're out hustling tickets, buy or sell, you see those signs. And now Alabama, having scored on its first three drives, field goal, field goal, and the touchdown, kicks it off again to a sputtering Clemson here. And here's Spiller. Spiller dives close to the 30-yard line, and Aaron, they've got to be pretty happy on that Alabama sideline right now. Brent, the Crimson Tide could not ask for a better start. Remember, they are playing at least 10 freshmen tonight, and all the coaching staff was very worried. I mean, they're going up against a top-10 team in an NFL-sized dome. You guys mentioned it sounds like a bowl game in here. I've been watching both the defense and the offense. These kids are not looking around, frightened by the crowd. In fact, they're just looking up at the Jumbotron, enjoying the plays of their 
The focus is squarely. There's another penalty flag flying, and that's too many men in the huddle. I could see the 12th man going off to the far side, so this will be a penalty against Clemson, and Tommy is not happy with what's happening with this team. That was Nelson Fairbairn, who should not have been out in the huddle, and he is catching a lot of frustration. Not a time to make a mistake because the coaches are going to take out all their frustrations on you, young man. So that's the associate head coach works for the wide receivers Dabo Sweeney. That's why he was so over the wide out CJ Spiller now will stay in the game. Clemson tries to spread the field and of course Harper coming with Jacoby Ford trying to get to that speed base around the corner. He actually took a direct snap on the move and uh, nothing much was doing. Alabama was ready for that little bit of trickery. Let's talk about what Clemson has to do at this point. I mean, it's so early in this football game. The big thing is settle down. Settle down. There's two minutes to go in the first quarter. All the pressure from the outside world. Just settle down and play your game. Trust your preparation. Trust your playmakers and just call the game. They go empty on second down. Short three-step drop. Complete and running for daylight is Jacoby Ford, one of the fastest players on the team. Remember we said the speed in this game is clearly on the Clemson sideline. This is what Clemson has to do. We just talked about and Colin Harper has that calm demeanor He's sitting back. There's the seam and when Ford is able to make a simple catch he's able to split the safety Johnson and watch how quick he accelerates. There's a quick little seam and easy throw Johnson the safety takes a poor angle. Remember Johnson's an all SEC safety but he underestimated the burst there by Ford. Kareem Jackson who started as a freshman for Saban last year number three finally ran him down. Now it is first down and 10 after the 47 yard gain. First rally. They come back trying to get to the perimeter with the end around, and that's Tyler Grisham. And Johnson that time did not turn him loose. A little frustration with that stop by number 49. We all know the college football, and especially in an atmosphere like this, it's a game of ebb and flows. Brent, you've been covering this game a long time. Emotion plays such a big part in a football game. For Clemson, just kind of weather the storm, settle down, and get back to executing, which is what they've done here to change the momentum around. It will be so big for the Tigers to get on the scoreboard on this drive. Oh, look at this. Harper goes all the way to the top of the screen, and Davis is right behind to take the snap. James Davis, handoff again, and they're staying out on the boundary this time. C.J. Spiller with a handoff from Davis as he came through. So Tommy Bowden is pulling out all the stops on this drive, but he is attacking the boundary except for that short pass over the middle, trying to use his speed here. And there's Davis taking the snap, and look who's coming in motion on the field together. C.J. Spiller as a defense. That makes it very tough. Are you going to take 28 away, or are you going to try to take number one? Either way, you're in trouble because they're going to go in the opposite direction. That's a nice read there and a nice pickup by Spiller. A fullback for Spiller. Harper back up underneath center. CJ jitterbugging could not get back to the line of scrimmage and that play was blown up. There's your first two drives one yard but 40 two of the 62 of course coming on that one pass play as they brought it back down the field. Clemson coaches told us this week that one of the strengths of Colin Harper is whether he throws four or five touchdowns or he throws four or five interceptions. He's a very calm very controlled quarterback when it comes to his emotions. He's going to need to be tonight to get his offense back in sync which he's done again. But nice job of it here on this drive. Final seconds of the opening quarter from Atlanta. Pump fake in trouble. Sack. Back at the 28 yard line by Dederick. Brandon Dederick, a junior from Elizabethtown, Kentucky, rolls in. Minus 11. It's hard to use all that great speed and skill when your quarterback doesn't have any time to throw the football. The first quarter belonged to Alabama. 
And ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Kirk, here's the problem on the offensive line. Well, the offensive line right now and finding out the speed and quickness of what Alabama can do. And number 70 in the left guard, Jamarcus Grant, quickness is a challenge for him. And it wasn't an exotic blitz. It was just quickness and speed right around him. And with the new offensive linemen, again, big concern is how they will adapt to this crowd noise in the Alabama defense. So here is a third and 22. Clemson wants to stay in field goal range. They don't want to give up another sack. Long odds for a first down in this situation. They'll take a crack at it. Throw in underneath. And they're about the 15-yard line. That'll bring the field goal unit out. Tyler Grisham gives them a little bit better field position. And that was Rolando McLean. And last year, he was one of two freshmen who started right there. Number 25 and number three both started as freshmen. Two more freshmen start tonight for Saban. So he's slowly but surely building the program. And here is Mark Buckles on to attempt a 33-yarder and put the Tigers on the board. This is big for him right here. Okay? They've yes, got to get on the scoreboard. Yep. Nice looking field goal. 13-3. So let's take a look now at the Pacific Life game summary as the Alabama Crimson Tide from nearby Tuscaloosa rolls into Atlanta and they really dominated that first quarter. Well, they dominated in the trenches and what we've seen with Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator, is that a physical brand of football, which in my opinion has taken a lot of pressure off of John Parker Wilson, who's kind of, again, had a career that's been a bit up and down. The numbers, the time of possession stands out, where they've controlled the ball to keep it away from the speed of Clemson and their ability to score quick but most importantly Brent it just comes down to the battle so far in the trenches has been dominated by John Parker Wilson's offensive line well let it go out loud and clear that the SEC is ready to defend its title as the best conference in the land remember Alabama is only a middle level power according to all the preseason experts they're not even up there with the Georgias and the Floridas and the Auburns LSU's and all of the great powers here in the SEC and yet Alabama a slight underdog here tonight comes in on the favorite to win the ACC Tommy complaining there was a horse collar out there that's against the rules this year of course but uh, the ball will be on the tee and the Tigers will be ready to kick it off here in the Georgia Dome a huge crowd on hand the Atlanta Falcons should be so lucky to have crowds like this <laughs> you're right about that Julio Jones number eight is back there and behind him that's Javier Javier Arenas and Arenas trying to hide he said come on Julio let's go Julio looked good on his first reception picked up about eight yards tie kick and Arenas will pick it off at the nine here we come they were going to set a reverse Julio had dropped back and was going to come around but it was blown up by the Tigers and Butler makes a stop Matt Weiner what do you got for us Brent, I've got a Taco Bell update on another set of Tigers from St. Louis, Missouri and Illinois, both ranked for the first time in this rivalry. Mizzou sets off on a 10-play, 67-yard drive to start their season. Derek Washington punches it in, and Mizzou leads the Illini 7-0, still early over on ESPN. Chase Daniel, the Missouri quarterback. We've got a connection over on that Alabama sideline to Chase. I'll give that to you right after this snap. John Parker Wilson stands in the pocket and this is complete again to Nick Walker his second reception the backup quarterback for John Parker Wilson is number 12 for Alabama Greg McElroy he is a sophomore he was the backup for Chase Daniel at South Lake Texas he is a young man whom according to coach Saban today knows how to manage the game not a particularly special arm but he's somebody he would trust if he has to use him out on the field he said I've got a couple of young freshmen who probably aren't ready but McElroy knows the offense second down and four
There's the inside handoff and getting a big workout today is Mark Ingram. 5'10, 215 pounds from Flint, Michigan. Again, another one of the freshmen that we've had a chance to see. And the coach has told us what he's done. And I think now we're seeing it. We're seeing all the backs that have had a chance to come into this game and play have all brought a little bit something different. But what's great is you can keep them fresh and you can keep them hungry. But this guy oh, on, is different. On. Congratulations. You picked two great upsets today. I cannot believe it. <laughs> My young man over here. Hey. Bowling Green to go into Pittsburgh and win. And how did you ever tout East Carolina against Virginia Tech? Virginia Tech team. Come with me to the desert, my good friend. <laughs> Third down now. John Parker Wilson picks up a first down at the 30-yard line. Travis McCall. John Parker Wilson is just in a diff he's in a rhythm right now. You know, and I think that the reason he is able to do that is last year he felt like he had to do everything. He always just seemed to have to make the throw. And I think any quarterback that can relate. Then when the offensive line would cave in, he's squeezing the ball in. And then after one mistake, it would lead to another mistake. Right now with his great running game, it's his best ally, and he is settling down and looks very, very relaxed. And as I said, in rhythm so far in this football game. 1220 here in the first half. Trying to eat up some time. Receivers were covered. And he dashes back for about a yard. And Daquan Bowers, number 93, makes his presence felt. There he is. As much as Julio Jones was touted, Daquan Bowers was actually, for Clemson fans, the number one recruit in the entire nation. And of course, Terrell Pryor was rated number one on several of those lists, and mm -hmm. he quarterbacked a little bit today for Ohio State in two weeks. Certainly looking forward to that little game out in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Whoa, did USC look good today, Ooh. folks. Big time good. Here's Coffee. Coffee steps across the 35 yard line as you watched USC against Virginia it looked like men against boys I mean that, that wow are they physically imposing the thing that I keep trying to say to people about USC is that we're in the middle of a dynasty whether you're a fan or not appreciate what they're doing they had 10 players head off from last year's team to the NFL and I think right now they might be better this year than they were the last couple years with Mark Sanchez under center and the talent that he has around him and they're always going to be one of the best defenses in the country well here's third and six for Nick Saban's tie Four receivers spread across. Steps up in the pocket, in trouble, fires it out, incomplete, and there's a penalty flag, comes flying. Coffee, the intended receiver, the safety valve, as he slipped up as the pocket was collapsing. And that is on the D. Well, that is a obvious tough break here for the Clemson Tigers but Daquan Bowers put so much pressure the defense ball will be plays in the spot of the foul automatic first down DeAndre McDaniel number two over there was guilty he was just cleared to play after a, a nasty incident up at school it's a deferred suspension that they have put him on so if uh, he misbehaves one more time it's adios first down and ten John Parker Wilson it was almost picked off and there's a penalty flag and they're going to call it again on Chancellor with the coverage and I thought that flag came a little bit late. It was very tight coverage. Pass interference number 38 defense ball will be plays in the spot of the foul first foul. And it, uh, Tommy's still in the headlines but he doesn't think that's a foul. Let's take a look here. Okay. And it's back to back uh, interference here by by Clemson. Oh, it was wow question. He comes over the top and comes through Julio Jones. Absolutely. He had his hand no on question. already. Yep. No question. Automatic first down now. Ball spotted at the 45 yard line. Ingram back in as the running back. Stover one of the wide outs for Bama. Ingram. Doesn't go down with the first hit, does it? This is an impressive freshman debut here tonight. I think right now it's going to be a game of adjustments by the coaches upstairs. Remember, you can only speculate as you get ready in college football for week one. 
Different things happen. Different adjustments need to be made. Jim McElwain comes in from Fresno State. So Clemson thought they might have an idea what he might do. And now all of a sudden you get midway through the second quarter. You start to make adjustments and you start to get a better feel for what each team wants to do. And then it's about who can go out there and execute. Keep an eye on John Parker Wilson. They're going to hand it off. Pretty conservative call. And uh, Ingram carry again. It was Michael Hamlin, the fine safety, coming up for Clemson. Well, he's, of course, is an all ACC safety, number 25, big time player. Ingram listed at 215 pounds, but he runs like he's 235 pounds. I mean, he lowers that shoulder. It safeties, is a very, safeties are going backwards. Very conservative game plan. Sure is. Part of Alabama. Yeah. I mean, they are well, keeping it. When you control things up front, you can do that. That's why control the line and then mix in just enough play action and you get one-on-one -on -one opportunities you can go downfield and throw the football a very long one on third down they're going to throw now john parker's back got wide open for the first down walker again walker's been their leading receiver here tonight nick walker from Brundage, alabama 21 yards and they have found something here tonight against the clemson d great patience by john parker wilson i want you to watch the safety here because that's what john parker wilson is going to read notice how the safety goes deep and takes away his receiver julio jones toss to ingram breaks the first tackle and about a strong seven yard run on first down when the safety went deep, it just opened it up, and John Parker Wilson was able to make the great throw. And then all of a sudden, they go with a with a no huddle. It's just little things like that put a defense on its heels, and they lose their aggressiveness. It's at this point that some folks are even hinting that Nick Saban may be underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that story as the evening unfolds. Second down and two now for the Tide, and they're rolling again. The freshman batters across. So we came in raving about Julio Jones, but we may leave touting Mark Ingram here tonight. The freshman from Flint, Michigan, is moving the chains for the Tide. And the other thing is, and the thing I tried to talk about coming into this game is with all the talk of the freshman, having an experienced offensive line that's physical and having a veteran quarterback that understands defenses can allow you to go and do some things and give yourself some chances at the line of scrimmage based on what he sees and right now they're running right into the teeth into the speed of the Clemson defense instead of bouncing things outside it's right into the middle Antoine Caldwell is the center there he tried to get outside coffee did to the left side behind Johnson and Andre Smith Chris Clemens the free safety bounced up to make the snap think about Clemson and their second the, the linebackers 200 pounds with McDaniel May is about 220 Connor's about 220 and you think of the offensive line and what you have in the size you don't want to bounce things and run east to west you want to challenge them and try to wear them down by running right at right at them second and seven John Parker back in the pocket. Here comes Walker again. He's at the seven yard line. DeAndre McDaniel back on the field. Making the play. This is what we heard about simple throws. Last year, a lot of the Alabama contingent talked about John Parker Wilson just didn't seem to have the simple throws. It was always downfield. This offense is going to be about the power running. Quicker throws, getting the ball out of the hands, and easier decisions for John Parker Wilson. And so far, he's having a pretty good football game, 8 of 10. Alabama spreads the field on this third and three. Releases, takes off, dive for the first down and got it. John Parker Wilson with a great little bit of scrambling, ducked the stop, and was able to get there. Not sure he got the best of spots, but uh, it appeared live action that he had it pretty easily. But that spot, let's keep an idea with it. It's a, it's a small gain, Brent, but it's the fundamentals to slide in the pocket and then stretch. I think his knee is right at the yellow line. I agree. But I last agree. year, he probably Good would spot. have thrown that football into coverage. 
This year, he holds the football, steps down, and on third down, picks up a first down to keep this drive alive inside the five-yard line. Hubert checks in as the fullback, the junior from Knoxville, Tennessee, and they'll put coffee in there, so they'll give themselves an extra blocker here with a first and goal from LaVar. Are you enjoying it tonight? Alabama fans. Their team, they're getting an A here tonight so far. And Clemson a C minus. Now they're going to see where that knee came down and where they spotted. It is going to be very, very close. And Nick Saban not too happy with uh, with this review, but it's going to be the spot. I think they're going to see where the position of the football was when his knee touched. I think they're just going to try to get a feel for where the ball is. Seems to be at about the three and a half yard line. I don't even know where they spotted it. In, Looks just to me inside. like it's pretty accurate. Yeah, it? Right by, it's, by yeah. the four? Yep, just that's inside the, ball the four is. yard standing line. standing right there by the four yard line. I mean, I don't know, but uh, that's what it certainly looked like on this take. Take another look here. It's not his knee, it's the ball. It's just inside the four yard line, which is exactly where they spotted the football. Gives him a little bit of time to uh, go over some things with the offensive line here. Caldwell Johnson Smith we've mentioned them on the left side but Marlon Davis and Drew Davis over on that right side are doing a job for him too and uh, the key receiver here tonight has been the tight end Nick Walker and get used to that in this offense they have a young freshman Chris Underwood who might be the best athlete they have at tight end and eventually in this style of offense you're going to see Underwood Walker and McCall on the field a lot this year for Alabama. Another long drive wearing down that Clemson D the 14th play of the drive coming. It was interesting when uh, when I spoke with Tommy Bowden this morning on the telephone when they were headed on over here. Have to review the ruling on the field stands first down. But when I spoke to Tommy, he seemed to be a little bit uptight. I asked him, playing a big-time opponent, he played Florida State last year, what does it mean in the opening game? And he laughed, and he said, not much. He said, it helps us in recruiting higher-profile guys, and uh, they'll consider Clemson when we play in these big games against Alabama and these other teams. But uh, at the end, I said, well, I think you're going to have some fun here tonight. And he said, fun for you. <laughs> That's so right. You, you could tell already. Well, he's not having any fun right now. No, he's not. Coffee back in as the running back. First down and goal. Play fake on first down. Lob wide open. Touchdown. And there's that man again. They're turning Nick Walker loose. They're going to go there all night long to number 88. Well, the, the tight ends again. This is a big part of this offense. Running the football in simple throws. Here he is right here. Gets to the outside. Because they're running the football, the safeties and the secondary and the linebackers are consumed with the running game. And you, they allow the tight end to slip right behind him. You cannot turn a tight end loose like that. You saw on that replay running free to the corner. That is fundamentally unsound, and every football man watches it and knows it. Alabama rolling tonight in Atlanta. Came in here an underdog and they're beaten up on the best the ACC has to offer. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Dodge, introducing the all-new Dodge Journey. If you can dream it, do it. Dodge, grab life. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Aflac, ask about it at work. Clemson ready to go, starting from... Own 26 yard line here, trailing 20 to 3. Alabama has scored every time they've handled the ball. Field goal, field goal, and then back to back touchdowns. James Davis, the running back. Cullen Harper, the quarterback. Kelly has been shut down big time. Here is Davis behind the left side, picking up a couple of yards, and let's go back to the Aflac trivia question. 
We have a hold on just a second. I think we've got a penalty flag thrown about the 35 yard line here. And that's on the Tigers. Boy, Clemson. This hat, you got to be careful here. You're coming apart at the seams right now. So that is six straight years, you know, that Alabama has lost to yeah. Auburn. The last Alabama coach to defeat of it. Uh, two between two. There we are. There's, There's the answer. That's easy. Dennis <laughs> Francione, who is working over there in the ESPN radio booth, spent some time with Coach Fran. In his first year at Alabama, they beat up on Auburn. Second year, he started the six year losing streak. Mike Shula, and of course, last year, uh, Coach Saban couldn't beat Auburn either. And that is always the big one. It's fun talking to Fran. He's enjoying life. He and his wife moved close to Austin, Texas. Uh, he said if the right job comes along eventually, he'll go back to coaching, but he said he's enjoying working on the radio very, very much. Harper going to drop off that screen, and Davis bobbles it. Davis couldn't get a handle on the screen. I'm going to tell you what's frustrating me right now as I'm, I'm watching Clemson is, you know, the score is 20 to 3. You're on, you're, it's your first game, you're in the top 10, all the stuff about are they going to be able to live up to the hype? If you're going to lose the game, just go down swinging. I mean, show some life. Let's see some leadership. Show some courage. Right now, they're just kind of going through the motions. And with that penalty, they face a third and 22. Odds are long. Davis motions out. Harper's in trouble. Going down in the grasp. Was able to get it off underhand. They rule it an incompletion. Saves a sack. That pressure from Lorenzo Washington, a junior from Georgia. You know, it's third and long. And Alabama known with Nick Saban to get really creative on third down with their blitz package. But look what they do. They rush four. A little swim technique. And next thing you know, Lorenzo Washington's right in the backfield within two seconds. Watch to the right top of your screen. A little swim technique. Whoop, right by Humphreys, right into the backfield. Zimmerman. With Arenas. At midfield, he's going to let it bounce. Going to give him great field position. Going to be inside the 40-yard line. It gets downed at the 39-yard line. That's only a 25-yarder, and the Tigers are in trouble again, folks. Alabama applying the pressure tonight in Atlanta. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by New Gillette Body Wash. Unleash the power of your shower. There is Brad Scott kneeling down, talking to the offensive linemen over there. Lambert, Humphreys, Austin, Grant, and Harris. That they have got to pull together, Kirk. But this is going to be a long, long night. Meanwhile, on the other side, Nick Walker, the senior tight end, is having a career night. He has five catches for 49 yards and a touchdown. So a three-pack for Alabama off to the left as they open up this series. They've hit two field goals tonight, one a 54-yarder. They're just about close enough for that right now. John Parker Wilson on the inside handoff to Grant. Lisa, I can't imagine there are many smiles over there on the uh, Tiger sideline. Absolutely not, Brent. Uh, when the Clemson offense was on the field just a few minutes ago, the Clemson defense was sitting down on the bench, and they just looked absolutely dejected, just stunned. Outside linebackers coach Ron West earlier in the game, game had been trying to pump up the defense, telling them, don't worry about it, we've got time. But when they came off the field that last time, West lit them up, saying, we got to execute, we've got to do our jobs. We are responsible for getting ourselves off of the field. Let's see how long they stay on the field now. Wilson, short toss up over the middle to Roy Upchurch. Numbers are impressive for Alabama. They've scored on every drive so far here in this half. They've done it 
with a variety of formations. They're mixing it up. Right now, the, the first half could not have gone any better for what Alabama is trying to do. In fact, even in this, this drive here, they have great field position. They've come out with big, strong, physical personnel, yet they're in an empty formation. Now, Terry Grant, who led the team in rushing, is in the backfield right now with Roy Upchurch to see if they can maybe swing the pass out to him. It's something he did a lot of last year. Deflected incomplete. Fourth down and six. Their first drive stalls out on the night. But hold on. Remember, they've got one 54-yarder here already. So <laughs> <laughs> the leg is trotting out. Lee Tiffin will try another long one. But this one's only 52. Mere chip shot. Hit his career long earlier tonight. A 54-yarder. Here he comes again. Kickers love domes. Don't you remember Morton Anderson down here? Years with the Falcons. This was off to the right. Is he going to curl in? No. Does not. Well, maybe the Tigers can build on that. They finally stopped the tie. College football primetime presented by Jack Lynx as part of college kickoff week presented by Gillette on ESPN Labor Day. Now 8 Eastern Arian Foster and the Tennessee Volunteers head west. They'll take on Rick Neuheisel and the UCLA Bruins. New coach debut. See if they've got anything. Must be working on about their fourth string quarterback. They've had disaster out there at that position. Now let's see. Speaking of disasters, let's see if the Tigers can bounce back here. They've got 344 in the first half. Quick throw. Picked up about six yards, and that's Ford was the intended receiver. Ford is a, a junior. He's from Royal Palm Beach, Florida. And Colin Harper looks like he may have got stepped on after he threw the football. There was, again, pressure on him. As we've seen the entire first half, he's walking with a noticeable limp there. Well, maybe take another look at that. He threw that football, and again, Alabama defensive lineman came in on him as he threw the football. Not even bothering to rush. Dropping the linebackers in coverage, getting the job done with four rushmen against this offensive line, and drop. Cannot drop that ball in that situation. Yet Fairber does. That was a first down pass. Herber making two mistakes here in his first half that have been costly for Clemson. Remember, they had too many men in the huddle. He went to the sideline and caught an earful, and now a first down opportunity and a dropped pass. He's got to shake these mistakes and put it behind him. There's not good mojo for Clemson in this building. Remember, in the Chick-fil-A Bowl, they went into overtime and lost to Auburn. They kicked a field goal in their first possession, and the Tigers of Auburn bounced back and scored a touchdown to win it. First down. So Grisham, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama, picks up the first down. And we've got an injured player down, Kirk, down at about the 43-yard uh, line there. Looks like one of the big ones. Yep. Well, some of our uh, storylines, Florida easy. We'll see Tim Tebow next Saturday night on ESPN against Miami. Michigan losing. They did come back, but they still lost. Buckeyes big. And then you've got to say that this is a horrible day for the ACC. We've got to tell it like it is right now, well, my friend. You and I and our whole crew watching Thursday night as NC State went out and played. That was a step back for the ACC. And we saw Virginia Tech and right. the ACC lose to East Carolina. And this is supposed to be the best team in the ACC. And Alabama's on paper fifth or sixth exactly. in the SEC. This is supposed to be the kind of the the anchor trying to get it done and make it a statement for the conference. And this conference is much maligned 0 and 8 in their last uh, eight BCS bowl games. And this is not what they envisioned the first half. Yeah, exactly. Now, obviously, there is enough time and they've got uh, they've got some weapons to turn it around. But sure. The emotion's not good when you look at their heads over there. No, they, right now it, it looks like Alabama prepared emotionally, mentally, physically for this game. Clemson looks like. As much as they've tried to stay away from the distractions, 
maybe some of the outside pressure, maybe some of the hype, maybe they bought into how wonderful they are. And that's a coach like Coach Tommy Bowden, that's his worst nightmare, is being patted on the back all through August when you haven't done anything to really earn that. Sometimes a, a team will buy into that, and right now that, that's kind of what, what Clemson looks like. Well, Tommy Bowden, uh, we asked him about all the preseason hype, and here's what he had to say. I don't know that it will be different. You know, I mean, I know the, the fan reaction, the media reaction, and the, and the preseason hype is that it will be different. But uh, for three years in a row, we've, we've come out second in the division. So I don't know that we will. If, if, if it is going to be, if it is going to be, then I think the players have to feel a sense of urgency uh, that, that, it, that that's what has to happen. And if they feel a sense of urgency, then I think we've got the skill to do it. If they don't, then we'll end up second again or, or further down the line. Well, Barry Humphreys will head off into that uh, side line. But you go back over the last three oh, yeah. years, and they appeared to be climbing the mountain and had tough, bad losses late. Uh, they, they've had their chances. They've been so close to getting into the ACC championship game. Won all the way back three years ago with Tom O'Brien was at Boston College. A game at home they should have won. They lost here. Huge favorites against Maryland. Again, at home and lost as a number 19 team in the country. And then last year, a drop pass that would have won this game against Boston College by Aaron Kelly who would have gotten them to Jacksonville in the ACC title the last three years. Opportunities and they've missed them. Time here in the first half. And they completed across midfield. Speaking of Aaron Kelly. Gained over a thousand yards coming back. Marietta, Georgia. And uh, that's his first reception of the night. Now, as bad as this is, Brent, you just touched on it, and you and I are thinking alike, and I'm sure Tommy Bowden's thinking about this. Still two minutes to go. Exactly. This drive is pivotal. Pivotal that they just, they get a chance to get some points. They get the ball back to start the second half, so they have to do something here with this drive. Got a second down and five. There's that screen pass that Saban was concerned about. Goes back to Kelly for another first down and they're on the move now. A little pushing and shoving going down there uh, after the whistle. You know, Aaron Kelly is an interesting guy because he's 6'5", about 190 pounds, and usually when you see a tall receiver, they're more of a straight line down the field, throw it up in the air, let him go up and make a catch. With Aaron Kelly, he's got a little bit of action after he makes a catch. He's got some explosive abilities. The score here in the last two minutes would be huge for Clemson. Four wideouts. Hubbard's got time. Middle too high. Incomplete. Crowd wanted interference. Colin Harper is a, not only a qualified quarterback, he knows what he's doing, and another Clemson Tiger down. But Brent here, this is a great look at him being late. He's going to fake the screen, throw it now, a little bit sooner, and he would have had a chance to slide that in there to his intended receiver. But because he was late with the throw over the middle, it made it much easier for Woodall to come in and come after Jacoby Ford. And Jacoby down after that hit by Woodall. So the Tigers are not only losing on the scoreboard, they're getting knocked around pretty good here by uh, by Alabama. That's a, that's a dejected Tiger right there. Coming up now on the Bud Light Halftime Report, John, Craig, and Doug will have highlights from the nation's top teams, including Georgia, Ohio State, USC, Oklahoma, plus Florida's Tim Tebow, the returning Heisman Trophy winner. And uh, Matt Weiner, uh, what's up, my friend? All right, let's get a check of your primetime pulse right now on ESPN. Illinois has taken the lead on Missouri thanks to a Derek Williams interception return for a touchdown. It is 13-10, Illini there. And Mississippi State, Sylvester Crooms' season debut on the road at Louisiana Tech. The Bulldogs trail 19-14. Yeah, some interesting things still unfolding here. And, uh, Jacoby... Uh, Bending up. Brent, I, I know the Clemson's down 20 to 3, so their game plan has had to change. But think about this. We came into this game in our production meetings talking about, you know, 
dis a discussion. What's the best tandem of running backs in the nation? We came up with a few here and there, but we decided coming into the year, James Davis and C.J. Spiller are probably the best tandem as two backs in the nation. There's talented backfields like USC and others, but as a tandem, C.J. Spiller and James Davis. You know how many yards they have in this first half combined? Rushing many. Seven yards rushing for the best tandem in the United States of America. We came up with, I love DeMarco Murray and Chris Brown, Cooper and James at Miami, P.J. Hill and Zach Brown up in Madison, Wisconsin. Like I said, you could bring up USC, Georgia, Ohio State because of the combination of three or four backs. But just as a tandem, I think this is the top two tandem anyway coming into tonight. They got seven yards here in the first half. Second down and 10, 148 to go. The ball resting on the Alabama 39-yard line. Harper back in that pocket, collapsing again. Fires deflected, intercepted. Picked off at the 29-yard line by Marquise Johnson, the junior from Florida. Sarasota on the deflection, picks it off. That's a nice interception here. Brent, but I want to, I want you to watch this young man right here, this sophomore, Orlando McClain, and watch his eyes and instinct for the football. Reading the quarterback's eyes, gets a hand on it, deflecting the ball, tight window for the quarterback to throw, but boy, what a play by the sophomore. 6'4", 250 pounds, reads Harper's eyes, gets a hand on it, making it very easy for Johnson to come up with a pick. Kevin Steele telling us today that he is a very intelligent linebacker. And uh, Kirk and showed, showed, showed that with that replay Absolutely. right there. Now it's first down and 10. And uh, Nickel tried to eat up the clock here. Up Church is in the backfield. Off behind the right side to the 41. The idea now is to keep the clock running, take this 23 lead on in intermission. May making the stop. We get a word from the West Coast that uh, Cal leads the Spartans. California 17, Michigan State 7. They're in the uh, second quarter in that game out west. And how about Western Illinois leading Arkansas in the fourth quarter? Wow. 24-21. Bobby Petrino, tough start there. Looking for a McFadden to reappear. A little over a minute left, and uh, Walker <laughs> steps out with his sixth catch of the night. Nick Walker. His sixth catch and John Parker Wilson, 11 of 14. Alabama fans have to be watching this game right now saying, is that the same number 14 that we've been watching the last two years? As I said, playing quarterback is about the fundamentals, having good footwork, being in rhythm, being comfortable. And right now, these first two quarters, he looks more comfortable in this half than I've seen him in his last two years. As a starter, he is only 13 and 13 through the years. But here tonight, just drops it off underneath. And Upchurch does the rest. Boy, McElwain and John Parker Wilson have done a job together. And the young man you can see has just stepped up and is mature, looking over the sideline, has the signals over there on this second down, runs away, got a chance to get a first down and more. He'll stop the clock, steps out of bounds as he crosses the 35-yard line with another 32 seconds, and they're getting down in Lee Tiffin territory after that 15-yard run. Brent, you'll, you'll love this. I know it's, it's a small thing, but I love to point this out when it happens. Watch the running back Roy Upchurch take on a block. Boom! Took that linebacker and took him to the other side of the field. Keep in mind that that's their most athletic linebacker, McDaniel, the Clemson has. He just drilled him, opening up a great scene for John Parker Wilson to step up in. Alabama still with two timeouts remaining, and they drop it off. A first down, up church again. The junior from Tallahassee. Remember, they've got two timeouts now. Saban was down to get use one of them. Just keep rotating different bodies into the lineup. Points. There's Saban bringing everybody on over to the sideline. Brent, I, I, I know it's early. This game could change in the second half, but 
what you and I and I think the rest of the <laughs> college football fans are watching instead of saying oh boy there's Clemson being Clemson what I'm saying is be careful be careful with Alabama we all said when Nick Saban went to Tuscaloosa it's not a matter of if but when the Crimson Tide would be up there where LSU and all the big boys hang out in the SEC would it be in the third would it be in the fourth year Right now, it looks like it might be year number two. <laughs> this is a very impressive performance tonight by Alabama and Coach Saban. And I want to make a point about Saban. I told you that I thought Tommy was a little uptight. Saban was totally relaxed this morning. Yeah. He would have talked football for <laughs> three hours on into the morning. He uh, he could not have been more relaxed. I came away after me. I said, you know, I think he thinks he can do some business against this team. And uh, that has certainly turned out to be the case. Final 22 seconds. Saban and the tide now will try to use the clock coming in underneath and they're down to the 12 yard line and Mr. Upchurch is wide open. If you look at what you're witnessing right now he is John Parker Wilson looks like a different guy he's dumping to the backs he's throwing it to the tight ends no longer worried about downfield completions it's just a small throws can take a couple of shots at the end zone here. And out of bounds goes Walker. His career high tonight, seven receptions. There is a penalty flag, however, on the far side, the uh, the far eight-yard line. In this offense, I have a feeling whoever's calling his games might be talking a lot about a career high of receptions. Considering this is the first game, pretty good execution here, the two minute offense. Yeah, and this penalty's gonna hurt Bama. Ineligible receiver downfield. Number one on Alabama. The player was covered up. Five yard penalty. So that's a freshman learning mistake. That is Scott, a very ballyhooed athlete who was uh, covered up and was ineligible when he went downfield. So they'll coach him up on that. The final seven seconds here. You got. Uh, you can take a crack at it, and uh, saw Nick Saban talking to John Parker Wilson with seven seconds, probably telling him, "Listen, do not take the sack. Get back, make the throw." And then he told the official, "I'm right here, yelling timeout. Nick seven Jackson. seconds, not a lot of time to work with." Take one crack at that end zone, and then kick the field goal, or stop it out of bounds. He did that right there, and that's incomplete. He was already out. So on the incompletion, here comes Lee Tiffin. Two field goals tonight, 54 and 21 yards, and he'll try to put him up by 20 points at the intermission. Well, if Clemson's got a blocked field goal in their playbook, <laughs> they might want to Good pull time. it out. Dial up, oh, hey, did you see that Frank Beamer had that punt block? Oh, yeah. Well, a little zone. How about Skip Holtz, huh? Yeah. Wow, what a great upset for East Carolina, and there is the third field goal of the evening this one a 34 yarder for Lee Tiffin all Alabama the tide rolling here and let's go down to Aaron Andrews with Nick Saban coach you preach finish to your team how do you relate that to them in the locker room after dominating this first half well there's no score I mean we got to come out and play like there's no score in the game and finish we had some games like this last year this is a talented team they can make a lot of plays we got to keep the ball on offense like we did in this half. Play on the line of scrimmage. Turnovers are important, and we got two big ones, so we just got to keep playing. Thanks. Lisa, over to you. Thanks, Aaron. Coach, Alabama scored just about every time they yeah, had the yeah, ball. What's giving your defense so many problems? We're getting out here. I mean, they're, they're tougher than we are right now. We're not very physical. We're going to go and talk about being a little bit tougher. Can't tackle a little bit tougher. They're playing a little harder than we are. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, Lisa. So we'll find out. If the Tigers come back in the second half, or the tide will continue to roll. The halftime report with John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie after this. We welcome you back to the Chick fil A college kickoff presented by Southwest Airlines, the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. A sellout crowd on hand, one side very unhappy as the Clemson Tigers trail the Alabama Crimson Tide by 20. It is 23 3 as we get ready to start 
the second half. Nick Walker had a career game in the first half as a tight end. But you made a key point now. Clemson gets the ball first to start the second half. Yeah, it would have helped him, obviously, to get some points at the end of the first half. But do they get the opportunity here? But first half, if you haven't seen it, it's just been complete domination in the trenches. Tommy Bowden, the head coach of Clemson, walked off, made a comment. Hey, we're just getting beat up right now. They are hitting us harder. And he's exactly right. We've talked about it throughout the whole first half. Up front in the trenches on both sides of the ball, especially with Alabama's offensive line. There's been surge after surge. They're pushing people back. And then how about the young freshman back tonight? Mark Ingram running physical. It's just a different attitude from Alabama. Old school wearing Clemson down. And so far, we've not seen thunder and lightning. And we haven't seen all this skill that we've been hearing about from Clemson. That was our Southwest Airlines playbook as you saw the domination of the Crimson Tide. And now C.J. Spiller, he's lightning to the two, looking for daylight, spins free, goes left side, foot race, goodbye, hello end zone, we're back in business, that's a 96-yarder, put it on the board, baby. There might be some heat lightning in the area right now because finally, finally we see it. 96 yards for C.J. Spiller, and that is exactly what Tommy Bowden and the Clemson Tigers needed to get the energy back, not just a touchdown, to get the energy and the life back in this team in orange. Buckholtz tacks on the extra point. Let's take another look. He met resistance about the 25-yard line, Kirk, and was able to spring free to daylight. Well, anytime you have Spiller back there, there's always this potential. He shook one tackle, and once he was able to get off of Marquise Johnson, it was just all about speed. Unbelievable burst from C.J. Spiller. Watch 24 come from the left, has a clean shot, shows you... There's some not only speed from Spiller, but also some toughness. He ran hard that time and gives, gives the Tigers the touchdown that they needed. So let's see if we let Nick Saban keep score. It's 7-0 Clemson. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Last year, Spiller returned a pair of kickoffs for touchdowns for the Tigers. Don't tell me he's hurt. Stre you know, he's stretching it out a little bit. Let's quickly go to Lisa. Well, Brent, one of the uh, Clemson sports information officers was in the Clemson locker room at halftime, and he came out and told me that Bobby, that Tommy Bowden told this team, look, this game is not over, but you haven't played with any fire. He said, don't you dare hang your head, but you've got to have some fire. You've got to take the fight to them. C.J. Spiller, that touchdown, maybe they were actually listening, Brent. Yeah, absolutely. We see a few smiles over there on the sideline. Heads are back up. They were totally dejected in the first half, and now uh, Tommy's got his troops trailing by 13, 23-10. That's why the return from Spiller is so important, not just getting a quick score, but more importantly, helping with the energy. This is equally important. Don't let Alabama match it, because here comes the big one. Julio Jones. And he stopped about the 25-yard line. Quickly, we go to Aaron. Well, this is not what Nick Saban told me coming out of the half. He preached to his team. He preached finish, just like he did going into the half. He said we have to keep them on their toes. But one thing he did tell me, Brent, is the offensive line, they have to keep up the pressure. They have to hold the line of scrimmage and keep the ball. No mental mistakes, guys. So let's see if they have any when they come out here in their first series. They were very efficient to start the game. It's all about establishing the running game and controlling the line of scrimmage in the first half. From the 25-yard line, and that was Glenn Coffey. One of the four running backs, and Darrell Scott makes a stop as we take a look at our Pacific life. Game summer dominated completely by Alabama in the first half. Well, before the big return by Spiller, the thing that stands out obviously seven yards rushing by Clemson in the first half. Look at the time of possession. That's one way to slow down speed, have that kind of advantage with time of possession and just wear down the Clemson defense. They're playing with a different energy though here to start the second half. John Parker Wilson was 14 of 18 in the opening half, and here's Coffee with a big hole. 
to the 47 yard line and a tied first down before Chambers makes a stop but it's a 19 yard burst. It's a big burst here and also linebackers actually the safety Hamlin blitzes from the outside and because he couldn't get there in time and allowed coffee see Hamlin just a hair late and it once he missed that tackle off the blitz there was nobody left there in the seam and it's a big gain that time by coffee from their own 46 stays with coffee stopped at the 50 yard line on that first down carry well, this Clemson defense, Vic, Co Vic Coney told us earlier this, this week, he's had some pretty good defenses as a defensive coordinator at Clemson in the last three years. He said this team has a chance to be the fastest and the best defense that he's had since he's been at Clemson. Or well, that's accurate, that's true. We need to see him step up because after a big return, the last thing you want to do when you're down is to allow your opponent to go right back down the field. They need to get Alabama's offense off the field. Freshman Mark Ingram checks back in at running back. Impressive in the first half. He pass protects. Wilson's got time. Far sideline incomplete. That one was intended for Jones, the freshman phenom from Foley, Alabama. President Butler, the corner, is left on an island against the superstar true freshman. A little hitch and go. A little inside move. And Butler didn't even think about biting. He's out there by himself, giving up some size to the much taller Julio Jones. Great coverage. The ball thrown to the outside. We'll give Butler a lot of credit for being out in an island there and making the play. Nick Walker was the preferred target. He caught six passes. Here we are in a third and six again for Alabama has time going deep down the middle incomplete Marquise Mays well, Clemson was able to get pressure on John Parker Wilson they came with four a little twist to the middle Bowers the true freshman gets in there and boy boy oh boy Mays gets behind coverage if John Parker would have put on just a little bit more air on that football he might have had Mays run under it for a big touchdown there on third down first punt of the evening for Alabama P.J. Fitzgerald so a burst on the kickoff for a touchdown stop Alabama and guess who's back deep C.J. Spiller runs up got it at the 16 yard line dances for daylight shakes a tackle but they bring him down at the 26. <laughs> every time he touches it you hold your breath and that's the truth now can the tigers continue to roar you're watching saturday night football on abc Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. The GM employee discount for everyone. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. While you were away, Instant Replay wanted to take another look at this 11-yard punt return with Alabama leading Clemson 23-10. to They may have detected a knee on the ground, which would kill it right there at the 33 about. It was an 11-yard punt return by Arenas. And the knee gets down. After review, it has been determined that the punt receiver put his knee down on the 33-yard line. That is where the ball will be placed. First down. Please reset the game clock to 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Cost saving in Alabama 11 yards. It was a good pickup by good instant catch. replay. Yep, good catch by the guys upstairs. You know, Clemson gets the big return, but one of the things that I've seen is Alabama by controlling the line of scrimmage. We'll see if they're able to do that on this drive, but boy, oh boy, they not only controlled the clock, but the amount of plays that they've already had. Well, certainly near the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. John Parker Wilson in the tide. Front back on, that shotgun lurking. 
That's Glenn Coffey coming into the backfield, the left side of the quarterback. Set a screen themselves. That's young Scott. And not much doing on that play. It was read perfectly by Brandon May, a freshman linebacker from Mobile, Alabama, for Clemson, who has played a fine game here tonight. Number 20 has been a very active defender in the middle for the Tigers. Talking to him this week, this is one of those games. He's an emotional player. Being from Mobile, Alabama, playing against the Crimson Tide, they didn't recruit him. Big chip on his shoulder coming into this football game to take on Alabama. Second and ten. Here's Coffee. Short of the 40 yard line. This will bring up the third just, down. Just kind of wearing Clemson down. And when, when, you, when you control the ball and you keep the ball away from your opponent, look at the difference. In 27 plays. They have run 27 more plays at Clemson. Clemson's only run 25 plays. What happens is you get you wear a defense down when you possess the ball and continue to just wear on them. Agreed, but here is a big third down for Clemson. If they can force him to punt again, Bama needs five yards. Pressure gets it off and complete. Jones, the freshman. And Bowers was closing in. Let's see if he made the clean catch on this ball. He was going down. Well, you, you, didn't, you didn't really see a reaction. He was right in front of the Clemson bench because I was with you, Brent. I thought the ball might have gone down towards the turf. Like he got his hands underneath the football. But a nice throwing window and John Parker Wilson. We're going to take gonna a stop peek it. at it. Yep. I didn't find the replays to be definitive. Remember, the call on the field was complete. The visual evidence has to be clear cut. Somebody's going to challenge this. Clemson called the timeout to challenge the ruling of a catch on the prior play. So let's take a different look here. Well, I agree with Brent. The first one we saw, I don't think it's enough to turn it the other way. The ball looks like it's heading towards the well, turf, the but his body gets in the way. What about the, the nose way. of that football? Is there anything Let's definitive here? Take a look. That looks like a catch to me. Can't tell about the nose. You just can't see it. I thought it was close. But uh, this is the replay uh, official upstairs. How'd you like to be that guy? Tough call. And again, yeah. it, was, it was call complete on the field. And usually when it's a gray area, it obviously it stays with the, the call on the, on the field. Now he could lose a challenge here and a timeout if he's not successful in overturning this. And while we've got a moment, let me remind you the uh, the drama, the romance, it's the season premiere you've been waiting for. Grey's Anatomy returns with a two hour television event Thursday. Finally. September 25th at 9, 8 Central on ABC. The Herb Street household will oh, be watching. Absolutely. And of course, we'll also remind you that two weeks from tonight, you'll want to be with us out at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Pretty big tussle between Ohio State and USC. USC very impressive today. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Yeah. Well, we could sit here and debate. If you're a Clemson fan, it's incomplete. An Alabama fan, it was a catch. But up here, we you really. I didn't think it was inclusive. Yeah, so you, you, you're going to st always it was stay. Called catch, so you stay there. Yeah, if it was called incomplete, it would have yeah. been incomplete. So here we go. First and ten. 26 to go in the third. Well, we've got a little administrative stoppage here. The referee and the umpire make a little note on the instant replay there. First down and 10 for the Tide. John Parker Wilson. 16 to 22 tonight, throwing the ball. 
Staying on the ground with Coffee. Big hole. Coffee for nine yards. Brent, I know I keep saying it, but when you when you continue to run the football and have success, the challenge for Clemson is to not give up and get worn down mentally, not just physically. And when you see a ball carrier dragging tacklers five yards, that's where fatigue is starting to set in. Missed tackle, missed tackle. Coffee carrying a defender four or five yards. That's the result of what happens in the second half when a team is continuing to get physical up front. 81 yards for Coffee. And about four more as he bangs for that first down. So the junior from Walton Beach, Florida. And uh, boys, I mentioned all those towns up there and, and along the Gulf Coast. Gustav, every time you turn on the television, scares you a little bit more and more. And we hope that people are leaving New Orleans safely. And I know a lot of them are headed up to Shreveport. I saw on the news today the buses were loading up. And uh, we join everybody and uh, don't gamble. Three years ago, we had that horrendous Katrina. So under pressure now, John Parker Wilson, and it's incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 from the 39-yard line. McKissick. He was there defensively. Julio Jones checks back in from the uh, Alabama sideline. They've got two hand signalers for Alabama. One, of course, a dummy signaler. For Nick Saban, John Parker Wilson, the senior. He's a very good offense here tonight. Coffee pounding away and headed for a 100 yard game. The coaches call Glenn Coffee their most reliable back, just a complete running back. Catches the ball out of the backfield, runs hard, understands the system. Big thing, he's good on pass protection. Jim McElwain right now, give him an A-plus for his performance right now as an offensive coordinator in Alabama, two and a half quarters into his start. And another big third down for his offense and also for this Clemson defense. John Parker Wilson has not thrown an interception tonight, and that is big with him because that plagued him last year all too often. He's going to put it up again. Beautiful throw for the first down. And number 88, Nick Walker, senior from Alabama, having his career night, 12 yards on that play. Just keep an eye on him and, and, and watch how easy this is. It's, it's nothing elaborate. It's not crazy. Goes to the flat. He's got man coverage. Look how soft the cushion is. And that's a mistake by Clemson. Anytime it's third and four or five, you should step up because of how many short throws we've been seeing from John Parker Wilson. You'd think they would step up to negate that, but they continue to give him the short, easy throw for another first down. Ingram. Now he starts to pound away. And when he hits people, they go in the opposite direction. Almost every time that he's been in the football game, and isn't it nice for him to come in with a fresh set of legs? Coffee carries the ball for four or five times. Bring in the true freshman, Mark Ingram. Here comes that poor safety that's been coming up, hitting Glenn Coffee, and now he gets 220 more pounds thrown right into his shoulder. Alabama has rushed for 178 yards tonight, and they have held Clemson to nine yards rushing. Domination of in the trenches, and Ingram again. It is possible tonight that both Coffee and Ingram will go over 100 yards. Coffee already has 90, and Ingram with 65. And Walker, you look at Big Walker, the tight end, who's had his career night. And it's easy to forget that when he was in high school, he was a place kicker and a good one. And we've got uh, one of the big tackles down there. Andre, Andre Smith. Smith is yeah, he's had a big Brown. night. A great game tonight. He has been pushing Clemson defensive ends all over the field. Let's take a look here to see if there's anything. Look, that's pretty much his night, just pushing people around. Like, like maybe he... Possibly that lower leg, maybe an ankle. We'll have to see. 
he was thinking about trying to stay in, and then eventually he just says, I just can't put any weight on this thing. And he just, he just goes down. You know, Kirk, it is so interesting what <laughs> Nick Saban <laughs> didn't have when he got at Alabama, and that was talent. Now, Smith, of course, is one of the more talented ones, but let's go back to the last NFL draft. It was the first time since 1970 that not a single Alabama player was picked in the NFL draft. That is about to change in the next few years with this school. They have nine scholarship seniors on this year's team. Still a young, young football team. Third down and two. John Parker Wilson on a nice roll and wide open is England. Nick said he had good hands and why not? It's in the jeans. Ingram can catch, but I'm still somewhat mystified why after two and a half quarters of dinking and dunking the football on third down, that Clemson continues to give such cushions to the backs and to the tight ends to allow John Parker Wilson to throw the ball about three or four yards downfield, make a catch, accurate throw, turn up field for a five-yard gain, first down. They're 8 of 12 tonight on third downs. Alabama from the 11-yard line. And that time, Clemson jumped that play. That's the first time we've seen DeAndre McDaniel as an outside linebacker shoot right past the Alabama offensive line with big Andre Smith out of the game he probably thought boy this is the first time I've had a little bit of room to be able to get through here and penetrate first time we've seen an Alabama ball carrier not pick up any yards Mike Johnson slid over from guard to tackle and they moved the backup guard David Ross into the left guard spot so that was the realignment after Smith limped off second down and ten Driven out is the freshman at the five yard line. Butler making the stop on Julio. He's going to be a good one. Sure is. I think you said it at the top of the game, reminded you down below a little bit of Randy Moss with that long stride, yep. size, ability to pull away from people. Let the game come to him here tonight as a. Uh, as a freshman, three catches, 24 yards. And Brent, one thing we're going to see this year is he's going to get opportunities in one-on-one -on -one coverage because Alabama is a physical team running the football. Teams are going to have to load up the box to take away that running game. He'll be alone quite a bit on the outside. Here's your third and three, and Wilson's going to throw for the end zone. Touchdown! There's the youngster's first touchdown with a crimson tide. Julio Jones, his first of many, I would say. Two, you can see the signal from the bench. Going to empty the backfield, it looks like. Now they're going to bring Ingram back. Ingram is behind John Parker Wilson. He'll try to run a toss play. Is there room? He's got it. Two freshmen. Jones for the touchdown. Ingram dashes in for the two points. Alabama 31, Clemson 10. The SEC all over the ACC in Atlanta here tonight. And the second of the sensational freshmen on a toss play. Two more points. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. This ESPN telecast available in high definition on ABC HD. It is now 31-10 as Jones has recorded his first Alabama touchdown. Uh, Julio Jones gets his touchdown, and I want you to watch the confusion 
by the Clemson defensive backs. It's a simple little route, but the confusion. One is playing man, the other is playing zone. And then they turn and look at each other as if to say, what's going on? And then it continues over to the sideline. They're arguing with each other. Kind of sums up the night some what we've seen tonight from Clemson's defense. Confused and trying to respond to what Jim McAway and the new offensive coordinator at Alabama has done to him tonight. Fielded at the five yard line. Aaron Kelly checked back in as a return man here. Well, here's your impact freshman. You can see what Jones has done and scored a touchdown. Meanwhile, Ingram has rushed for 65 yards, averaging over four yards a carry. Because of a couple of long injury timeouts in the first half, we still have four minutes to go here in the third quarter. They're at the end of three in Berkeley. And Cal leads Michigan State by 10, 24 to 14. So Jeff Tedford made a quarterback Side. change this year. Number eight of the kicking team, five yard penalty, re kick. They want to give that return team still another shot here. You know, there's one thing when you I want to tell a story about, uh, about Nick Saban there. In his first game as head coach at Michigan State, they opened up with Nebraska. And Nebraska blew him out. Was something like 56 to 13. Mont Green and you remember Lawrence that team? Phillips. Right. Yeah. They met Scary at the middle team. of the field. Scary. Nick said he was way down. Tom Osborne shook his hand and said, Coach, you're not as bad a football team as you looked tonight. And you know what? <laughs> Nick Saban said it kind of picked his spirits up, and they went from there, and they had a pretty good season up in, uh, up in East Lansing. And, of course, uh, you know the story about Nick. Down to LSU, won a national championship. Brief cup of coffee that ended very unpleasantly for the Miami Dolphins. Nick, uh, Nick made a horrendous mistake of saying uh, before he left that he was not going to leave for the job at the University of Alabama. I'm sure he'd love to have that statement back. But he does belong in college football. He seems to enjoy it more than he did down with the Dolphins. More control. I think it's safe to say at the, the collegiate level that what he experienced while he was at Miami. Speaking of control, I'm going to show you a story. Forbes magazine came out, fumble. That player might have been down. Yes, he was at the 25 yard line, and they'll put him in play there. The September 1st issue of Forbes magazine, Alabama head coach Nick Saban was called the most powerful coach in sports. First college football coach to make the Forbes cover since the magazine was started in 1970. Now there's the total control, recruiting, coaching, businessmen, public relations, 25 hours of private use of university airplane, couple cars, country club membership, extras. Yeah, they say closer to five mil a year. But Alabama's football program had 54 million in revenue this last year and a profit of 32 million. And I know it's easy to say that the professor's average salary is only 115. It's ridiculous. But business is business, and they generate a whole lot with that football team over at Alabama. Here's Harper. Threw it in beautifully. And it'll be a first down at the 36 yard line. That's one of his best throws of the night to Tyler Grisham. Well, it was a gutsy throw, too. He had to go right over the top of a defensive back, and it was a close call, but he was able to squeeze it in there. Arenas playing, <laughs> usually playing corner, but with five defensive backs, he slides in to play over the slot. The ball went right over top of his head. A good thing he's only five foot nine, and that ball would have been intercepted. 340 now, still left in the third quarter. Empty the backfield out. Spread the receivers wide. And watch the defensive front from Bama. They've been able to apply heat with four rushers. Now they blitz. And it's dropped again. Incomplete in and out of the hands of Fairbur, his second drop of the night. Well, Fairbur is, is really having a, a tough night. This time, Arena's coming on the blitz just to get into the face of Harper to try to slow him down. One thing that we have seen is when the pressure has come, Colin Harper has not only not uh, been able to settle in and step in and get a chance to complete the ball, but a lot of these receivers are not helping him out. He puts the ball there at times, and they're not holding on to it. SEC better get ready for the corner and the safety blitzes because when Saban's got it rolling, that's where he brings the heat. This is Davis. Can't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Now he bangs through for a couple of yards. Johnson bringing him down there. 
skies are clear as far as thunder and lightning are concerned folks we've had one big kickoff return but other than that blue skies as far as Alabama is concerned kind of get the feeling that this Alabama defense is going to be doing this to a lot of people they make it so hard to run the football with the way they play up front they're forcing Clemson to try to throw and then when they throw they get enough pressure on Colin Harper that he doesn't have a chance looks to me like Nick Saban may be ahead of schedule oh yes Harper's in trouble, going to be ridden down at the 29-yard line. Shavis Williams, the sophomore from Dora, Alabama, put a saddle on him and brought him down. Talk about the creativity and the great defensive coaches. Williams is a linebacker, but when you get into third and long, like a lot of the great defenses around the country, they put him down in a three-point stance and take advantage of his athletic ability and speed to get around the tackle and to chase down a quarterback just like he did there on Colin Harper. Zimmerman again. And Arena's back. Boom, high punt, fair catch at the 22-yard line. And let's check in with Aaron. Well, Brent, it may be the only negative thing in the night so far for Alabama. Junior Andre Smith is done for the game. It seems to be a right knee injury. Trainers have been talking to him on and off. He's been giving his teammates the thumbs up. So we can't think it's that bad so far. But remember, Nick Saban saying to us today, depth is definitely an issue. He told us, Brent, we can't afford to have anyone hurt. Yeah, exactly. And up 31-10, he's up on his wheels right now so you don't think it's too serious down there as you watch but yeah. 31 10 you can give you can give the big fella some time off here. yeah and they can't afford to lose him but you know what I'm starting to question that song and dance about we don't have any depth at least on defense they just every time you turn around a number of guy, a different guy in a different jersey sacking a quarterback or coming up with a big play England the freshman looks like he's got a tremendous upside for the tide like I said everybody came in raving about Julio Jones and, and we can certainly understand why over the defensive side that Dante Hightower that 250 pound freshman looks like he's about 265 the naked eye he's played well for him. they've had some great contributions from some of the youngsters here tonight and of course Nick Nick didn't know what to expect from all of them sure they played well in practice but game speed uh, is a little bit different second down and six. John Parker Wilson buying some time and uh, he'll toss this one away incomplete and uh, Chick-fil-A has been supporting college students with financial assistance for over 30 years to the tune of more than twenty five million dollars. So in sponsoring this inaugural Chick-fil-A college kickoff they will contribute fifty thousand dollars to both Clemson's and Alabama's general scholarship funds a very generous contribution by Chick-fil-A and I'm sure both of the schools want to thank them for that third down now coming up for Bama Bowers the freshman is eaten up by the tackle England gets back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe half a yard on that game the one thing now that is important for coaches players and fans of Clemson not to give up on the season because of what's unfolding here in Atlanta and that's that's the point I want to make this is this is still what appears to be one loss and they can they can still come back in the uh, in the fourth quarter but their big goal is to win the ACC championship and that of course is still very much on the line for them they've got everything ahead they go back up to Death Valley they got a very comfortable schedule when you look at it we'll show that to you as the evening progresses they can come back they have to shake this off and that's that's what's important about uh, about one game and uh, that, that all that all makes sense and sounds great but I don't like what I've seen from Clemson beyond X's and O's I I, I don't like the energy I don't like the, the shots that we've had right. on the sidelines I don't like the way they're looking at each other I don't like the way they're talking to each other the, the, this is one of those games you hope they can learn from and move on, but it's beyond just 
hey, we got beat by an Alabama team that's ahead of schedule, and maybe Alabama's a top 10 team. Who knows? Tommy Bowden's going to have to circle the wagons and start smacking some people around verbally, letting them know this is not going to be tolerated. Well, it feels much better when you see the Citadel, North yeah. Carolina State, and South Carolina State all coming to Death Valley. That's the next three games. That'll make you feel good. Yeah, yeah. Harper drops it off down to Davis, and he dashes down the sideline. The first and more in a foot race. There, Thunder finally lose. There is a flag, however. Hold on. It's back at the 43. Orlando McLean, the inside linebacker, says, let's bring it back. Bring it on back here. He's already all the way back to the original line of scrimmage, just sitting back there waiting on everybody. I'm guessing he got held. So this will negate a 42-yard gain with... Uh, was at the with the penalty at the end of the uh, of the quarter they'll snap again here during the run illegal block in the back number 86 offense 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul we will have one untimed down can't end the quarter on a penalty so that's why we have the untimed down coming up free play yep free play but Finally get a big play here by James Davis and big Michael Palmer. That was McLean that ended up get, getting held or kind of pushed in the back there to free up Davis to go down the sidelines. And that contributed to that run, too. That's why he was the one walking all the way back saying, bring it on back. Let's go. Harper going to lob far sideline and almost picked off. There's a penalty again. A penalty flag comes flying. Johnson with coverage over there. The only thing I could think of is that Kareem Jackson was pushing as the, ball, as the ball was up in the air. He looked like he might have been pushing on Kelly. Trying to get even with him to go up into the air. Number three, it wasn't, it was not Johnson who went up again to try to make the interception. Watch the left hand of number three. See how he's pushing? I'm going to call that, not to mention he never really looked back to find the football. That's a good call. See his left arm pushing in the balls there. That's, that's pass interference. Second time, Johnson's come over almost the same spot in the field. Where ball's been up in the air, and he's not been able to hold on to the football. So we're going to have another untimed down after that penalty. We we'll start the 25 second clock but Harper's quickly up under center I am caught as the quarter comes to an end a first down as CJ Spiller makes the reception Clemson has its hands full, trailing by three touchdowns. And ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. Back in Atlanta for quarter number four, Alabama dominating Clemson, the lone right spot for the Tigers was that 96 yard kickoff return by C.J. Spiller. A reminder now, stay tuned after this game for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. And then over on ESPN, tune over to Sports Center for post game analysis as well as all of the scores from today and highlights. The Shocker, East Carolina, coached by Skip Holtz, upsets Virginia Tech. And like Lou said on ESPN this afternoon, at least someone in this family can coach. <laughs> it's a good line. Sideline. And Ash, Terrence Ash, makes his first catch of the game. Number 87. Clemson down by three touchdowns. Needs to score quickly here. Got to get in and out of the huddle and 
Kind of continue to pick up first downs. Remember, we everybody's talked about the 40-second clock with a play clock, but the game clock now has a different set of rules too, too, and it makes it tougher when you get down to try to come back because it'll continue to move as opposed to stopping as often as it used to. Well, Harper dashes out from under center. They're going to make a direct snap to the running back. Harper is out wide. Last time they handed to Spiller. This time Davis keeps it. Davis dashes for daylight. So the variation of that play is he picks up the first down, down by the 20-yard line. I really like that as a wrinkle with their offense because if Davis is actually reading that, it makes it tough. It makes it very tough on Alabama's defense because if, if you think about it, they haven't probably practiced and looked at a lot of that getting ready for Colin Harper. It's a nice little change of pace. See if Harper and the Tigers now can strike. Game clock is running and seconds are precious when you're down three scores in the fourth quarter. Low snap picks it up, wants to set the quick screen. Kelly, ball comes out, but I think after it was down, it's marked down. It'll be second down and long. We send you down to Lisa. Well, Brent, you guys were mentioning how quiet C.J. Spiller and James Davis have both been tonight. And I asked Tommy Bowden before the third quarter as he came out of the locker room at halftime, what's going on with the offense? And he said the problem is we're just one-dimensional right now. We cannot run the ball at all, and we're having just a little bit of success passing the ball. And remember, all that talk and the question mark about the new offensive line, I asked him, what does that say about the O-line? And he says as long as we can't run the ball, it says it's not very good. Exactly. And they have not had a good night. There's a screen set again. Kelly inside the 20 yard line, but this is going to be third and long coming up. Got a third down now that is big for the Tigers. Don't need field goals, need touchdowns. Well, they went back to the exact same play, and it's so hard. I mean, to throw that back into the boundary, there isn't a lot of room there. And if you don't pick up the block, on the receiver who's trying to make a catch in man coverage, there's nowhere to run. They basically wasted it down there on second down. Harper throws high and incomplete, and it is fourth down. He got the matchup that he wanted. One-on-one -on -one coverage with Ash. Going up against the safety, Sharif, he got behind him, but he actually threw the ball behind him instead of in front, where it would have just eventually led him towards the end zone. Sharif catches a break. Harper throws the ball behind Ash. Had a touchdown there. Got to go for it when you're down 21. 12.40 to go. Not a time for field goals. They can get a first down at the 12-yard line. Harper dashes away, looks underneath, got him! But it is short of the first down. Out of bounds, Alabama takes over on downs. He could not get further downfield, and the defensive coaches for Alabama are very happy with that performance. Good effort here by Harper, who's not necessarily fleet-footed, but at the same time is able to buy time. And Ends up the Barry, the big tight end, is dragging across. He knows it's going to be a little short, but I think he's hoping that Barry would have enough room to try to step upfield for the next couple yards. He just didn't have enough room there towards the sideline. Got nine yards, but needed 11. Bama ball when you come back. The crowd in the Georgia Dome, 70,097 here tonight, and they have watched domination by an underdog. Alabama 31, Clemson 10. Not a major shocker, but uh, still an upset nevertheless. Clemson came in slightly favored in this game, and they have demonstrated they got a lot of work ahead of them, especially with the offensive and defensive lines. And now we see Upchurch spinning, and uh, we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary and a lot of things that Nick Saban wanted to do, he accomplished here, Kirk. Uh, he's been able to establish things up front with this new-looking offensive approach from Jim McElwain, running the football, setting up the play-action pass down by the goal line. It looked like Spiller with a big kickoff return might get Clemson going in the second half, but it's been more of Alabama 
running the football. Who would have thought 185 to 8 against Thunder and Lightning? But it's been that kind of night for the Crimson Tide. Instead, it's been uh, Ingram with your coffee. And the freshman from Flint, Michigan, back in there now and takes a little pitch and breaks free. Ingram across the 40 yard line. Oh my, what Michigan and Michigan State missed here. 28 yards for the youngster. This is poor tackling, a tired defense. Not wrapping up, just bouncing off, and it's great running, don't get me wrong. But look at this tackling by Clemson. It's in the fourth quarter, McDaniel bounces off him. You see Connor just throws his shoulder into him, and against a quality back like this, he's gonna run right through, just if you're not gonna wrap him up, and you're just gonna bump him, he'll run right through that every time. It's another sign of fatigue by Clemson's defense. Up church crosses midfield. A favorite chant going on right now, the SEC chant that SEC fans love. To... No question about that here tonight. Their team's you, winning. You look ahead at Alabama, and there's no reason why they should not be 4 and 0. Okay, they do have to go to Arkansas, but the Razorbacks may be down a little bit. We've got home games at Tulane and Western Kentucky coming up next. And then the schedule gets a little bit tough for the Tide as they come down to stretch in the SEC. Yeah. Working on this clock right now with Upchurch going right straight ahead. Here is the schedule that we take a look at. They do have to go between the hedges. And that is not going to be easy at Georgia on September 27th. Then you see they've got a road trip on October 25th up to Tennessee. Okay. Still have to go to LSU, and of course on November 29th, uh, that's the season breaker right there. You know, it's so. funny, outside of looking what Alabama has, Georgia, every time we talk about Georgia, the number one team in the country, we always talk about can they get through the schedule, and one of the games we've never even brought up until tonight is playing Alabama at home. So now you up the ante that much more for Georgia and their schedule and how tough that thing will be for them to get through. Nine forty four to go up church moving the chains again saving in the tide just bringing the seconds down off that clock well, so the one thing when Alabama does go to Georgia for that game between the hedges mm -hmm. they will find a new mascot the unveiling today of Ugga the seventh that's right he's three years old now and the uh, Seller family from Savannah escorted him on the field over there, and I'm sure he was a big hit with the, with all my friends over there. There's no mascot like Ugga. No. I'm telling you right now, there is there is Ingram, and uh, now there was a rumor he was a, a black bulldog. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that did they end up well, going with the black bulldog? Says that Ugga the sixth there from the Journal Constitution. He was the pops. I don't think. I don't think they went that way. Okay. They went the traditional. Hey, I'm looking here to see okay. Lauren's best. Okay. Oh yeah. The great <laughs> sideline reporter over there. All right. That's right. Lauren Smith. That's who he's named after. Oh, okay. He okay. works the side. He knows Ugga better than anybody over there. You know. You know, you know Ugga has a doghouse with a bag of ice and air conditioning. I mean, he is <laughs> taken care of. Those hot days down between the hedges. Yes, indeed. He is hanging out. Well, let's take a look at the uh, the All-State uh, top ten. Grant is now the running back, and uh, there there are the dogs. They beat Georgia Southern pretty easily today. Buckeyes got through USC. We've talked about Kirk. What jumps off that page other than Clemson losing? Here? Well, Clemson losing jumps out. Everybody else taking care of business. I guess it, it was somewhat predicted, but the thing that happened today is USC going on the road across the entire country. Lost 10 players to the NFL coming back this year. Mark Sanchez dislocated kneecap. What's going to happen with all the injuries? Business as usual is what happened. Exactly. And they have an off week to get themselves ready mentally and physically before Ohio State comes to town for the showdown in a couple weeks. Caught. 
Mike McCoy to the 20 yard line for a first and 10. 24 more yards. John Parker Wilson has grown up a, right before our eyes. Having a ball game tonight. And he's, like I said, he's just, he's always had the ability physically. Now I think you're, wait, look at him step into that throw and put it right on the money. Oh, it was juggled that he had. Yeah, he, run, and huh? he held on. McCoy holds on. But it's so exciting for Alabama to see their quarterback play with confidence he's in total command tonight of this new system imagine having three offensive coordinators in three years as a starter in Alabama right now he looks he should be very excited about the future this year got the Beatles look going huh that, that, that hairdo coming back there's up church it's the shag it's that <laughs> SEC haircut Well, the SEC is, is clearly number one until proven otherwise. But I would like to nominate the Big 12 as a very strong number two. Now, the last time I saw the score, Missouri was still ahead of Illinois. Big. And uh, St. Louis in that game. They put a you know, 45 on them. On Chase, them Chase Daniel told me earlier this week, he said, you know, our defense is really going to surprise some people with how good we can play on that side. Here comes home. a bullet. <laughs> you got an upset says, for me? Yo, Brent, Arkansas State 18, Texas A&M 14. Don't give that score to that a quarter? He'll smile. <laughs> final. <laughs> That's a final. Arkansas State over Texas A&M. Sunbelt flexing the muscle. <laughs> Well, let's check that. Maybe it is the Pac-10 that's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Haven't been a ton of upsets today. No, but you know, that, that one's one. That's and, a big one. Uh, Virginia Tech losing. East, East Carolina. Carolina. East Carolina. Yeah. And Pitt losing the Bowling Green. I got to tell you something. Skip Holtz oh. is going to be offered a big time job. I, I, I thought know? it might happen this year. Yeah. It's definitely going to happen next year. He's getting it done well, now. He sure is. He lost his big time running back. Didn't matter. Chris Johnson, Johnson out there. Chris, one of the fastest guys on the field. The reason I remember his last game. two games, he beat Boise yeah. State and Hawaii, and now yeah. he upsets Virginia Tech and Blacksburg. Yep. That's pretty impressive. Charlotte today. Yep, oh, he did. Great coach, great demeanor. Love his, his kind of an infectious, upbeat attitude that rubs off on his team. Here's Grant bringing it on down, and uh, looks like Alabama's going to walk in for another score here on. Uh, just another 11 play drive here for the Crimson Tide. They now have run 78 plays, and Clemson has run 37 plays. Back to the drawing board for Clemson. Like I say, a little bit of home cooking. We get that great fan base going up there. They're going to be very unhappy. This one's going to hurt for a few days. They expected to uh, to be one of the challengers. And uh, now they've just got to survive and get this offensive line back together and make another move in the uh, in the ACC. Well, the talent is there for this team to still have a great year, but emotionally, I want to see if they could turn this thing around. The SEC chant starting up again. A lot of the orange-shirted ACC folks are headed for the exits. I see, I see far more empty seats over there where the color orange was predominant than I do over right underneath us. <laughs> there, there, you see the split? Uh-huh. Guess who's not leaving? <laughs> 79th play. Only two plays all night were negative for Alabama. Only two negative plays all night long. Well, it was interesting, you know, Nick Saban and, and the uh, Crimson Tide went into that horrendous four-game losing streak late. LSU came back on them. It was a tight, close game. Then in the fourth quarter, LSU took over, won the game. They then lost four in a row. The nightmare was Louisiana Monroe. They then couldn't get by Auburn, but they did go to the bowl game and beat Colorado. Then Nick and his staff rounded up one of the best recruiting classes uh, in the nation. I know they're called number one by uh, by some of the services, but you probably really can't measure a full class until two, three years down the road. But it's impressive, let me tell you. 26-yard field goal attempt. Remember, it was Tiffin who started this with a 54-yarder. And he adds another one. Offense, defense, and special team. Total domination. We are back where Clemson 
losing 34 to 10 and uh, only 149 total yards. Kirk? One of the things I love to look for is leadership and intangibles. There's a senior center on the left, Caldwell, taking his time to go to the other side of the field to pull aside Dante Hightower, a true freshman who just played his first collegiate game to say, welcome to the college game, give him a hug. Those are things, that's the magic that you hope eventually evolves, and tonight it's evolving for Alabama. Exactly. Harper picks it up off the ground, snaps it off complete to Grisham. Well, I guess uh, you can start to wonder if the SEC can be the first conference to claim three straight BCS titles. Remember, it was Florida and then LSU and now several contenders. When you look around the SEC, one of the things that jumps off the page is that list of coaches. We've talked long about Nick Saban. But there are five current SEC coaches who have won national championships. Saban, they're going to set the screen, try to get Spiller loose for the first down. Les Miles, Urban Meyer, Steve Spurrier, and it seems like a long time ago, but Philip Fulmer won one with Tennessee. The yeah, first BCS championship right. game out in the desert beat, beat Florida State. So not only do they have talent, great fans, but they have got an abundance of outstanding coaches. Well, the SEC is always, almost all, every year, the premier conference in college football. But I don't think we've ever seen the depth and the direction of the dominance of the conference as we're seeing it right now. On a slant to Ash, that's his second catch you know, of the night. Brent, coming into the night, Coming into opening weekend, everybody talked about Georgia and Florida. Right. South Carolina looked good on Thursday night. Right. Tennessee's a team in the East. That's just the East. And then in the West, it was always Auburn and LSU. Old Miss might be an upset. Over in Alabama, Nick Saban. All of a sudden, you look at Alabama now. I mean, you're talking about seven or eight teams that are top 20, top 15 caliber teams. Well, Clemson will be toppling from the top 10 obviously with this performance as Harper manages to get back up and uh, throws it incomplete. Auburn is right behind Clemson in the AP poll over the top 10 so they'll figure to uh, to move up. Texas Texas Tech knocking on the door. <laughs> A downer. A bummer. Even the SO club is quiet. Not the way it was supposed to work out. But for Alabama, happy days are here again, huh? At least for this one night. So they beat a top 10 team here tonight. The Tide's last win back in 2005. People think last year at 7-6 and six, it was a down year for Alabama. You and I were talking before the game. At one point, they were 6-2, and two, ranked 17th in the country, up in the fourth quarter against LSU at home and gave up that lead and lost four straight. They're a lot closer than people give them credit. Is Tyler Grisham again? Yeah, that final against LSU was 41-34. That was a flameout. Then Mississippi State interception before the half, return for a touchdown, and then I think they just they ran out of gas. Yeah, they, 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 they didn't. They shut it down after that. And then Louisiana Monroe, that was 21-14. Then Auburn 17-10, and then they did come back against Colorado. In Shreveport, 30-24 was the final. Then the great recruiting class and. Uh, they come back here and uh, make a statement tonight against the cream of the uh, ACC. And again, it's incomplete, intended for Ash. I don't want to pile on the ACC, but it, it is it is a fact. Virginia Tech losing to East Carolina. Uh, you had Monday, Thursday night, North Carolina State losing to South Carolina, dominating fashion tonight. What was thought to be the best team in the ACC getting dominated tonight? Just not a not a good start for the college football season. Wake did go to Wake Forest did go to Waco. 
and knock off the Baylor Bears. In Maryland, only a 14 7 win over Delaware today. Second down, and that's Kelly ripped out of bounds, and Alabama continues uh, to be physical. Talking to Saban about what he wanted to accomplish at Alabama, he said, We have to change the mindset. You know, uh, and he said the fans, the fans sometimes their expectations are too high, but uh, you know, he doesn't want to force things with this team. And last year is interesting what he did. Jones, they knew all along, the staff felt that Jones was not going to declare early. But it was the first house on December 1st that Nick Saban went to. He went and sat down with Jones and he said, you are our number one prospect, but we want you to know that. He knew he wasn't going to get a commitment then, but they stayed with him, and uh, Julio is now a member of this rising tide over in Tuscaloosa, and it just shows you uh, the premium work that, uh, that Nick Saban does as a recruiter, and the sack that time was Higginbotham. Anybody who's followed Nick Saban's coaching career, whether you like him or you don't, res the results are obvious. When he went to Tuscaloosa, I think most people felt felt within three years Alabama would be where LSU is currently and they're definitely on their on their way in that direction. Well I, the only negative and there's interference line judge called it the only negative on his entire resume is how he left the Miami Dolphins. You know he kept saying he wasn't leaving he wasn't leaving and then uh, finally Alabama would not take no for an answer and when they came down to make him that kind of an offer. Uh, it, was, it was not taken well in South Florida, but I, I don't think you can blame Saban for what he did. No, no. Well, you and I, you and I are looking at things rationally and objectively. When it comes to evaluating Nick Saban in this conference, there's a lot of emotion involved in looking at Nick Saban. You know what I mean? So it, it's almost one of those things where. There's a lot of jealousy in the same way when Steve Spurrier was at Florida and he had it going there in the mid 90s. It's just animosity because of being jealous of his accomplishments. In underneath well short of that first down fourth down coming up here. Final seconds tick away now. It was a wonderful setting and uh, the fans uh, enjoyed at least the Clemson fans enjoyed it until the kickoff. They had a great time here in Atlanta and uh, Nick Saban and the uh, Crimson Tide coaching staff to build on it. Look at the cameras dashing onto the field. They want to get this picture of Saban and the staff. Look at those photographers. Take a break, and then we'll come back. We'll wrap it up. Alabama, a big win in their opener. They upset Clemson 34-10 is your final score.